Everybody, welcome to the Cow's Channel 2, A Cow's Opinion. Your weekly show where the cow gives you opinion and it doesn't really matter because it's a moo point. And today we are looking at several wonderful things. The first thing I am super excited about is Tactics Ogre Reborn. Square Enix just dropped a bunch of information today and have been releasing it for a while. So I just wanted to go over some of this stuff. Returns November 11th. That is... Uh, not that far. And it's a Friday. I'm going to be able to play all weekend. I love it so much. So, let us take a look at Tactics Ogre Reborn. Because a lot of you are probably of the mind of, what the hell is this? So, if you don't know, prior to Square Enix being a company, they were two companies. Square Soft and Enix Games. Square Soft made Final Fantasy and a bunch of other stuff. And NX made things like Dragon Warrior and a bunch of other stuff. And one of the coolest things that they made was a series called Ogre Battle. Now, Ogre Battle was on this fictional fantasy world, very knights and dragons and magic-like. This is a map of the Tactics Ogre world that you get to explore, these aisles. But basically, it was like a, a very long, multi-decade, I believe, story of episodes about the rise of a holy empire that foretold the coming of, like, demons. But the empire is, like, also trying to take over the world to prepare for... It's a very complex story. I don't even remember lots of it. You got to play a Knight of Lotus, or Lodissian, as they sometimes write on it, in the one of the prequel games who was a really kind-hearted person, but in the canon ending that you can get, he loses, like... His best friends in the world. It hardens his heart. He goes back to his holy empire. And he makes a knightly order that believes that we have to conquer everybody. Because this kind of bad stuff is going to keep happening. It is a wonderful complex tale of battle and political intrigue. Uh, the first one came out for the SNES. And was also re-released on the PlayStation 1. And then again, Tactics Ogre. Which is the precursor to Final Fantasy Tactics was released on the SNES, but really hit it on the PS1. Uh, the Tactics Ogre game never got to be released outside of Japan, didn't come to America. And in fact, Ogre Battle was a really fun, popular game, and they only released 25,000 copies. Now, you can get Ogre Battle on, like, uh, PlayStation stores, and I believe the Switch store also has it. Um, it it's a really fun game. There's an alignment system that I'm not a huge fan of, which is why I may not play it for the channel unless I ever give like an option to turn that off. But just fantastic. It's, but I've been told that this is an amazing game. In fact, if you enjoy the Final Fantasy Tactics series, you owe it to Tactics Ogre because. The man behind Tactics Ogre was actually hired away from Enix to come to Squaresoft and make Final Fantasy Tactics, which is why it was one of the first really darker, mor morality-driven stories Final Fantasy had ever done at the time. And it was, but that is a hallmark of the Ogre Battle franchise. After these two companies merged into Square Enix, Nothing. There was no more... Final Fantasy was always the more popular one, especially because for some reason they didn't make a lot of copies of a lot of the games. You had a couple for the Game Boy Advance. You had uh, Ogre Battle 64 for Person of Lordly Caliber, which was them trying to continue the series after they lost their main man behind the franchise. But uh, the issue being that it kind of went in a little bit of a direction... They're not even sure if it's canon to the overall Ogre Battle story. They haven't commented. But this is the first time we're getting an actual Ogre Battle game. And I'm hopeful that it means that we'll get more remakes or remasters. Or even like new games and a continuation. Because it's supposed to be a long multi-decade story of good versus evil. And what is right and what is wrong if you're trying to save the world. It's fa I love these games so much. I played them for hundreds of hours. Probably going to play this one for hundreds of hours on the channel. You guys are going to get sick of it. It'll have zero views, and I won't give a damn. Now, before we get into it, I want to let you know. I am aware that a lot of people are complaining, 
about the price. But yeah, as you can see, pre-purchase tactics over for forty-nine ninety-nine. Pre-purchase with the digital reborn, uh, premium edition, which I believe is just the, yeah, ten tunes from the original release in ninety-five. This bonus content may be available for purchase at a later date. So it concludes standard edition, the original soundtrack, and the reborn original soundtrack will be sold separately. So. Ignore this. Some people like to support the game and like to buy the music. Uh, I understand that it's technically... It's not a remake. It's a remaster. Which means they're not fully redoing everything in a new engine or anything. So, some people are very upset that it is asking for $49.99. Uh, Squirrel, I know that this is the kind of thing that some uh, publishers and developers would do. And your opinion is probably valid. You might be right that maybe for an old game that's only being remastered, it is uh, a little pricey. But they got me. I'm, I'm just giving them my wallet. I'm sorry. I know some of you are like, cow, don't do that. Guys, I'm a, I can quit Blizzard games until I feel maybe after the Microsoft purchase goes through and I see them treating the workers better and getting a certain troll out of the head of Activision Blizzard. But... I'm sorry, Squaresoft got me. Square Enix got me. They're, they're, they're going to get my money. That's just the way it is. So we're just going to look at their official little blurb here. and Because Tactics Ogre is reborn, and in fact, that is the name. It's coming for the PS5, the PS4, the Nintendo Switch, and Steam this November 2022. Mark it on your calendars because the cow will be making an episode. I don't know yet if it's going to be on the Switch or Steam on the channel. Uh, I'm hopeful. I know sometimes the PC version of these games can have extra problems, but I'm hopeful that they're testing it enough to where that's not an issue. So let's look at a brief history of Tactics Ogre because it goes all the way back to 93 with March of the Black Queen in Japan and it became a hit. Again, only 25,000 copies released in North America until it got re released digitally years later. So. It was weird. And then, 95, the predecessor to Reborn, Tactics Ogre, let us cling together in Japan for the Super Famicom, imported to the PlayStation. It, oh, it did get released in North America in 98. I never had a, an original PlayStation. I wasn't I wasn't that nerdy enough to have, like, tons of consoles. I had some consoles, but I didn't have enough. I didn't even get a PS2. I don't... I In fact, I think someone gave me a PS2, which is the only reason why I had it at the time. The game was one of those cases of lightning in a bottle. Res resonate with players winning it of following the persist to this day. I have been really wanting it. Yeah. And in 2010, the original team made a re... Well, a team with many of the original developers made a remake for the PSP Portable. Tactics Ogre, Wheel of Fortune. Although in America and Europe, it was Let Us Cling Together Again. Now, the remake for the PlayStation handheld... Did have an improved story, a bigger world, and an updated game, and it did do very well. But there were certain changes to that game that players did not like. The biggest thing was the fact that you didn't have you leveled classes together instead of an individual character. What that means is, I level up all of my knights instead of this knight is level five and this knight is level three. But that's okay. So we are going to look at what's new in Tactics Ogre Reborn, because I believe they've gotten rid of that, but we will scroll down here. Host of enhancements to visual, sound, game design, and more. So first of all, high definition characters and backgrounds. Some people are complaining that it looks a little not so great. I think it looks fine. I think it looks pretty good. They're still detailed, and the backgrounds have been recreated in high def. We also have the detailed pixel art. We have this beautiful screen right here we're going to take a second to look at and enhance to look great on modern HD displays. So hopefully it will look really good for you guys on the uh, YouTube channel. So you have, you know, your character number is probably like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Yeah, that's just the number. You can recruit like, you can have an army of several dozen or you can have just a small army of specialists, whichever you want. He's Canopus. He's actually somebody from the original uh, game from the SNES, the Ogre Battle. His class is Vartan. He's level 25. He has an axe and a bow, and then he has his helmet. 
his uh, body armor, gauntlets. Those kind of look like boxer shorts, but I'm guessing that's actually like sneakers or something. And he's got an accessory. His clan, his allegiance, I believe is probably what the character's name. have no idea what all these symbols mean. There is a little symbol that's probably his element. He has no conditions. There's his little character model. He has a movement of six. He has a jump of 32 because he's got wings and he can fly. I don't know what RT-93 means. That might be his... Uh, that may or may not be his, uh, like, uh, I know the game does not go turn by turn like Fire Emblem or Symphony of War like we just finished. Your characters have different speeds, and if your character's fast enough, you can move a lot. You have four equipable items. You have some spells. You have some skills. You have something called finishing moves. I'm not familiar with the game. And then he has his stats. I want to point out that his level is 25, but he's got 926 hit points. You get a lot of HP in this game, so, you know. Like, here's fully updated user interface, not only in high definition, but redesigned to make information easier to understand with streamlined controls. See, Denim, who's actually our main character, is level 1. He has 87 MP, not too shabby, but he has 355 hit points, and he's going to do 88 hit points of damage if he hits Nathaniel at level 2 here. So, yeah. Now, this is... Some people will call this a little HP sponge, but what it actually does is it makes it a bit harder, especially with some of the game balance things they're bringing to one shot. It's not impossible to one shot. You can build some really strong characters in this game, but it makes it a bit more difficult, harder to one shot because you want to have that feel of like fantasy nights going through. Think it's a lot more Dungeons and Dragons like is a good way to put it. You know, if you've ever seen, like, Critical Role or played any of those kinds of games, you know that they're not really made to, like, be one-shotting characters left and right. Sound improvements. All dialogue in Tactics Over Reborn is fully voiced, and you can choose between English and Japanese. Oh, that's going to be difficult. I may have to ask on Twitter which one you guys... Because the text would be, you know, English... And then, but the Japanese voice actors go hard, man. If you've never seen, watched a subtitled anything that's really good. Uh, there was a article I've seen that I unfortunately did not write down, so I cannot put it here. Where the director was talking about how it took like three months to record all of the dialogue. The main, the person who plays your main character, Denim here. Which is what I'm going to call him until somebody tells me to pronounce it a different way. Had to come in for like five separate three plus hour sessions so he could do all of his voice lines. That's amazing. The sound effects are remastered. I like that a lot. Because that means that it's going to sound really good. And the composer Hitoshi Sakimoto re-recorded the entire soundtrack with a live orchestra. This excites me. You're going to get that real beautiful epic feel. With that, at times the melodies are ominous and filled with tension. What other times, a gentle reprieve. And it's going to be amazing to hear. Remember, this was from the SNES and PlayStation days. The, they had great soundtracks back then, but sound design was not like the most important thing that they were putting into games most of the time. They had very limited space. This is going to sound beautiful, which I can understand why they're selling the soundtrack. It even has entirely new pieces. Oh, that's nice. A redesigned battle system. I've seen a lot of people who've been, like, just loving fans of the PSP Ogre Battle, but not of its systems, cheering this part. Building on what worked in previous versions, this new game incorporates new elements as part of an overall redesign of the battle system. Unit by unit. This is the thing that's got so many people excited. It's how most tactics games will do it. The class-wide level management system found in Wheel of Fortune has been replaced by a unit by unit level system. So these two, if I have these two wizards, are no longer going to level in lockstep anymore. And look at the, I reckon I think that's that's like a cleric or an exorcist. That's a knight. There's canopus. That's like your base soldier. There's a cockatrice. There's a knight. There's a knight. There's a cleric. There's an archer. There's a golem. There's a Dragoneer, Dragon Tamer with the Dragon. There's a Valkyrie. Don't know what you are. Dragon, Wizard, Octopi, Cleric, Wizard, Berserker, 
Terror Knight, uh, Death Knight, I don't know what they're going to settle on for this translation. Little Gremlin, Archer, Griffin, Fairy, either a Special Knight or a Paladin, I'm not sure. Lizard Man, Wizard, Gladiator? But you can see, they have really distinctive looks throughout the Ogre Battle games, which is why I think I can name a fair number of them. Each unit advances differently depending on its class, making for an elegant system that lets players plot players, excuse me, plot their way through endless combinations of skills, equipment, magic for each unit. Yeah, so here's Jenik the Valkyrie. She has a two-handed spear. There's her helmet, body armor. I think this is also the equipment has been changed as well. Because I believe that in the original you can only have like four pieces. You could have any combination of these things, but only four of them. Whereas here you have a head slot, a body slot. Uh, arm or hand, feet, and an accessory, and then you can have like anything in each hand. You have we got a better look now because there's nothing blocking here. We have some items. She has these spells. She has these skills. She has something called finishing moves, which is really incredible. And then I'm gonna guess her physical attack, her ranged attack, her magic attack, her physical defense. Her range defense, and then strength, vitality, dexterity, agility, avoidance, intelligence, mind, and resistance. Don't know quite what each... Some of these are obvious. Strength is probably physical. Vitality is probably your hit points and saves against certain things. Again, this is fairly well inspired by Dungeons & Dragons. See, unlike our friend up there, she's classified as agile but not fly. So she can only jump up two and down three, whereas Canopus had 32-32. Her move is 5. Don't know what these things are. Her RT is 97. Still not 100%, but she has 182 MP. If I remember correctly, the way Ogre, Tactics Ogre, excuse me, handles magic is that everyone starts on the field at 0 MP. And then you can just... Uh, you can use items or skills, and over time, characters will naturally regen their MP. You can use it when and how you want. It's a kind of a really cool system that I wish other strategy games would mimic. Because it prevents you from... You have to get formations. You have to protect your mages better. You have to have your magic users support your front line better. It prevents everyone from just like building a bunch of mages and just nuking the other side in three turns. This means that the player is able to consider the bigger picture and decide on the overall composition of units to bring into each battle. I want to click on... Oop, that one. Sorry. Sorry. Just to make it a little bigger for you guys, because I really want to impress. Look at how many freaking these are statues, but look at how many characters. One of twenty-four. There are twenty-four characters on this battlefield, and that does not necessarily mean that there won't be more. I know also they've improved the UI. You can use a mouse or you can use a controller if you're playing on PC. But that's just so many characters. You got this big, beautiful staircase leading to this. I don't know what the point of this hallway is in outside of a fight because it doesn't really have anywhere to walk up to. But, you know. Oop, well, we're not going to go. This is beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> really great uh, purpose here on the Cows channel. And the battle AI overhaul. The team has made significant changes to the artificial intelligence of your opponents. Interesting. Enemies tactics are freaking nuking somebody with light magic will change depending on the layout and the state of the battle. Think about how to adapt your plan. Someone nuking with light magic. I love it when the holy classes can actually do cool stuff like this. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be something I'm just going to have to wait and see about. I don't know how good or poor the AI was. I'm hoping that they've rebalanced. I know that in the original Tactics Ogre, Archers are really re overpowered. You, you took a couple of them with you into a fight and you could just pick everything off. Then if you went to a new game plus or something because you want to see a different ending and or do post-game stuff, you would then realize that your archers are suck because the characters had higher stats and a lot of them had skills that just let them block arrows. So, you know, playability improve. Ooh, numerous playability improvements such as a quicker pace of battle, auto save, and a complete overhaul to the controls. Like, this thing, this has people excited. Items auto restock. So, you can maybe say, whenever I pass through a town or place that sells things, I want to make sure I have at least 10 healing potions and two whatevers. 
So that's kind of interesting. We also have something I want to talk about called a union level. In this game, as the game progresses and you complete objectives and stuff, your union level will increase. You cannot level a character, any of your characters, past that. So right now, this player cannot have any characters in his teams that is higher than level 25. Their, H their XP ball will freeze. I don't know if it freezes at zero or if it fills up for the next level up almost or all the way. And then it freezes then. But it's to you cannot just over level through the game. You can grind. You can get better equipment. You can train your skills. But your max level is capped. And then of course the campaign's gone for 113 days. Day of white skills your month. 310,000 goth. I've also been warned by several people that in the beginning of this game, you get a lot of cash. Uh, you should enjoy that because I don't believe you get a lot of cash for a bit of the rest of the game. And then eventually you can, like, you'll see you will get lots of money. But at the beginning of the game, they give you enough to make sure you can get, like, healing items and stuff to support you in case you have trouble with the learning curve. And then you, it, money's a bit harder to come by. Uh, here's a, a sign. You can, all this makes it easier to get into the game than ever before. You can see we have 10 people on this battlefield we're about to deploy in. And we have a guest character, probably AI controlled. Yeah, I, I just love it. Oh, and that's a witch. I love the witches. The witches were not very good in regular ogre battle because all they could do was like a stun. And I think they've been improving them as the game goes on. It's like, yeah, they can still do status stuff, but they can also do lots of other things. But here we have our main character, a knight, canopus. Just a soldier. I think that's an Amazon, which is the base female class. A witch. It's either like a healer or an exorcist. That's a wizard. Archer, cleric. And you can just... You, I like also that they have a... Here's your front line. Here's your mid line. Here's your back line. And then again, big, massive battlefield. Just showing us pushing through three different lanes. Getting a pincer attack. with. Looks like he's about to hit him with a giant hammer. There's a griffin up there. If it's on our side, we're good. If not, it's going to probably fly around behind them and maybe worry the cleric. The Amazon is being attacked by a lot of people here, so I don't know if that's a good... Somebody may want to support her. And then the down here is just like the characters and the voice actors. They've only listed three of the voice actors. And, and so it's not, I'm not going to go down through there yet because they don't have more characters. They're probably going to update this later. But the last thing we'll talk about the story and the characters. The game is set on the Valerian Isles, the jewels of the Obero Sea. Long a center of naval commerce, the people of the Isles struggled throughout history for dominion over her shores. Finally, there rose a man to put an end to this contract. Dorgalua Oberth? But history had known him as the Dynast King. King Dorgalia strove to stamp out the hatred among the people of the Isles, and for half a century, Valeria knew prosperity. Yet upon the king's death, civil war erupted once more, and three factions vied for control. The Bakram, who composed much of Valeria's nobility, the Galgastani, whose people made up the majority, and the Wallister, who numbered but few. So we got class divisions here. The Isles were soon divided between the Bakram and the Galgastani. Not surprised the Wallisters got shafted on that and an uneasy peace settled across the land yet none believe the calm will last what follows is an epic tale of war as many memorable characters get swept into escalate conflict there's your main there's his sister uh there's a wallace to do don't know him here's the king maybe he's not dead maybe he just uh well maybe we see him die here's the lord of a castle here is a clergy who becomes the regent. Thirst for power means that he's not very good. Lancelot Tartaros. He looks very angry. Captain of the Dark Knights, Lost Lorien, which hail from the mighty Holy Lodessian Empire on the continent. Though, again, a major part of the Ogre Battle series is the Holy Lodessian Empire like conquering things and trying to figure out how to like save or conquer the world depending on on which people inside the empire you're talking to. It's really cool. No one is really, no one side is really good or bad. There are some terrible people in all of the factions. And I really like that complex storytelling. We got the leader of the kingdom of Galgastin. And then that's it. 
So guys, I'm really looking forward to this game. We have a little bit more news coming in this episode. I just wanted to look more at this stuff and keep up with the Tactics Ogre news. And just stay tuned and we'll show you some bit more before we head off for the day. Thank you for watching. Guys, welcome to, uh, of course, the thing that I wanted to really hit on this week on A Cow's Opinion. We are looking at a Alone in the Dark announcement trailer. Oh, that's right. That's right. Now, uh, this is... For those of you who don't know, this is the granddaddy of horror games. This is the original. This is the OG. Seriously, the OG. This predates Resident Evil and I believe even inspired some of the cramped uh, hallways and other design choices of the first Resident Evil game. Alone in the Dark has not, however, had a near as good of a history as Resident Evil. Unfortunately, while the first game was really good, the rest of them kind of continued a downward trend in just how good they were. So, Atari sold this to THQ. As you can see, THQ Nordic is where we're watching this. And, basically, they sold it to them in 2018, and then we heard nothing for over four years. Now, of course, there was this little global event that I cannot say because YouTube would suppress the video going on at that time. But just a couple of days ago, as you can see here on here, we got this announcement trailer that they are going to redo Alone in the Dark. And we're going to check it out right now. And we're going to see if it's any good. Have not seen this. That's always promising for a horror game. You don't want, like, fluffy bunnies. Oh, what is wrong with this little girl? We are in the south. Um. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? This is madness. Are you crazy? Fall on your knees. Wear the mask. Raise his name. Oh God. And that is Alone in the Dark. Now, let me just uh, finalize here. There we go. Welcome to the Madhouse, detectives. So that we can have this nice little backdrop. Now, Alone in the Dark, the original story told two characters who had to survive like in this creepy mansion thing. They've modernized, but they are not ditching the original lore. You're still going to have the same uh, male and female choice of character, which is another thing that inspired Resident Evil to give you the choice between, I believe, Chris and Jill in Resident Evil 1, as well as other games. And they will have combat. You saw we had creepy monsters. We had things screwing around with us. I'm a little excited about this, to be honest, because I love horror games. I like to play more horror games for the channel. You should let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me play more horror games for the channel. And I would like the chance to play... I never even got to play the original Alone in the Dark, so if you're remaking it and improving it for the modern era, I am all there. But that is the end of your news for this week. Guys, as always, like and subscribe and comment. It really does help the channel out. We are marching to 500 subs as of this recording. It would be really awesome if we were there by now, but I don't think we're gaining the number that we need. Thank you again. And as always, play more games because games are awesome and you deserve a little more awesome. I'll see you next time.